probably recognize me from yesterday, if you were uh, here yesterday. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, today's webinar. We're going to be talking about Character Creator 3 a little bit more in depth. Uh, we're going to go more to the customization stuff. I'll just bring up the, uh, you can probably see the orc on the screen here right now. This is what we're going to end up with today, um, with complete with glowing eyes and all sorts of other cool stuff. Um, this is the outline here. We're going to use some of the custom skin gem tools. We're going to use the, uh, we're going to add some blood and some sweat to our character, um, customized blemishes and, and some dramatic lighting and other fun stuff. Um, and we're also going to talk about morphs as well. We're going to briefly uh, do morphs at the beginning. We're going to morph our character and customize him in all sorts of fun, funky ways. Um, all right. So as always, I guess I need to go through the whole spiel at the beginning here. So my name is Kai. We're going to be talking about uh, Character Creator 3. Covered that. Uh, we are going to be sending out, as always, the survey to, uh, to you guys. So if you have any feedback, anything you want to uh, learn uh, in future webinars or anything you want to improve, uh, feel free to uh, send those out to us. Uh, re return the survey to us and we'll give you a 10% discount for the content store. Um, all right, so that, that's the survey part. Uh, we are recording this and broadcasting live on YouTube as well. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be answering questions from YouTube. So if you want to answer or ask questions of me, um, please log into the Zoom link, uh, log into your Zoom uh, panel there. And there's a Q&A section in Zoom where you can ask any questions at any point throughout the webinar, whatever pops into your mind, just ask a question there. And I'll get to those questions in the last part of today's webinar. All right, I think that about covers it. Um, so uh, welcome to uh, our webinar today. We're gonna be uh, kind of uh, going into more depth on Character Creator 3, I guess I already mentioned that. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun stuff, so just uh, stay tuned here. Um, but before I get started, I also wanted to mention in the content store, we are going to be using a, a content pack from the content store. Um, so if you go to our content store under, uh, there's a section under featured collections called must have. Uh, if you go to character creator there, you will find a digital human essentials three in one. And this contains um, alt our ultimate morphs. So there's a bunch of morphs. Um, I don't think we're going to be using any of the morphs um, in this in today's webinar um, from this pack, but we are going to be using the Realistic Human Skin Pack, which I honestly think is quite essential if you're going to be customizing the skin and the appearance of your character. Uh, this is something, even if you don't pick up the other two, pick up this one. Um, but I mean, with the combo price, it's just so it's so good anyways. <laughs> um, and then Makeup and SFX. We'll do a little bit of that as well. A little bit of makeup. I know he looks super ugly, but he is indeed wearing some makeup. In this case, he's wearing uh, tribal paint. Um, okay, and I think uh, that's really about all there is to it. I don't think I need to have uh, Chrome open anymore. So let's close that down. This is the character, uh, the big mean orc character that we're going to be uh, recreating uh, in this webinar here. If I press the forward slash key, I can move my directional light around so you can see him a little bit better. All right, and you can see if we go to uh, you know one side that uh, he has uh, glowing eyes. All right, and we'll. I'll show you how to make the eyes glow both in Character Creator and iClone and also in iRay for those of you who want to get a more, you know, photorealistic render uh, in iRay. I'll show you how to uh, take care of that as well. Okay, but before we get started, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a new project. And uh, if, you're, if you were here with us yesterday, uh, you might remember we had a little bit of an issue with the eyebrows. And um, I want to show you how to resolve that issue. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did this, but for some reason it didn't uh, have an effect on our character. So I'll start from scratch and show you, um, cause I know some people asked me afterwards, um, you know, can you give me an update on the, on the eyebrow, eyebrows uh, that weren't showing up? So uh, the process that we went through at the beginning of yesterday's webinar first was we started with our main character and we went to um, our content and just added, uh, whoops, where are we here? Um, under full skin, we added some, just kind of an aged uh, template, okay? So again, remember that the uh, full skin is only the normals and, and the uh, texture of the character's skin. It's not the color of the skin. Uh, the skin base is the actual color. So when you start this, um, of course, it's going to load up um, uh, skin gen uh, first off, and then we'll uh, throw the color on and I'll show you. It's actually in the makeup, like I mentioned before. I'm pretty sure I deleted the eyebrows from the makeup, but uh, it didn't have uh, any effect for some reason. And uh, I can probably take my... Uh, ugly mug off the screen here. Um, whoops, where are we here? Just to save, uh, save bandwidth and I'll come back on maybe a little bit later on when we're answering the Q&A and uh, uh, perhaps to do some uh, facial motion capture. Adios amigos. Um, so yeah, once this loads up, we'll see a bunch of wrinkles on our character's face again. 
and then we'll throw that uh, that other effect on there, the uh, the skin base. Because um, like we were talking about yesterday, this is essentially the best way to uh, change the color of your character's skin to make it look like a more natural color change as opposed to, uh, you know, using typical RGB. Okay, so well, again, we have all these layers uh, that are combined together with that uh, template. Uh, go to content, and then this time we'll go to uh, skin base. And under realistic human skin, that content pack I mentioned, uh, there's the female African right here. So it'll darken her skin quite significantly. And then again, just apply everything. And it's going to, uh, and then you're going to see the eyebrows, uh, you know, will remain, will remain white. Um, so it's not, uh, not ideal, obviously. And actually this, this orc character that we're talking about today, he's not going to have any, any hair. He's going to be completely bald, which is strange for a, for an orc, but, uh, uh, I figured he looks better without the eyebrows. So we're not going to worry about the eyebrows. If you want to learn more about the new hair system with eyebrows and hair, you can always ask me in Q and A, we can throw some funky hair onto our orc. Um, okay. Anyway, so now we have the eyebrows. So you see this, you recognize this from yesterday. Um, and then there's our, uh, our uh, skin base down here. Okay. Um, now if you go to makeup here, you're going to see the uh, um, eyebrows and yeah, this is just make those eyebrows invisible and you can reapply them. So just uh, you can right click and delete them and uh, reapply them later on. Okay, um, so we're gonna keep it like this. And of course the lips I wanted to mention here as well. Um, if you go back to the skin section, um, the lips, if you think they're a little bit, uh, I mean, most people have pink lips um, in general, um, at least in the middle. Uh, but if you just go to here and you go to your, uh, your skin base, um, by the way, a, use, a really useful hotkey for people uh, is press, if you hold control and press the minus key, it'll uh, minimize all of these little sections here. So it kind of, it's, it's a little easier to manage. And if you press control plus, it won't do anything. It's supposed to, uh, the control minus will uh, um, minimize them all. So you can kind of see them like this. And then you can go back to, there's a section here for color ID red lip. Um, now it's, it's using a, an ID map. Okay, so if you go to resource map um, under uh, texture settings, whoops, uh, not under texture settings. Uh, yeah, the color ID right there, you'll see that's the color ID map for the lips. And you can change that if you want to, you know, to be smaller or larger. If you don't wanna have any color on the lips, you can just uh, basically delete that. Um, I think if I uh, delete it, I uh, know it's not gonna have an effect in this case. You have to change the color um, within the color ID map, so. Um, yeah, but back when I, uh, back, like I was saying in the, uh, color ID red lip, you can change the brightness and you can see it'll just basically change the brightness around the edges. So you can blend it a little bit more, um, like that. And, uh, you can adjust the color and the roughness and uh, all that stuff. You can make the lips like shinier by adjusting the roughness here and, and so on and so forth. And this is just on the skin base. Okay. I'll zoom in a little bit better to see that. Okay. So there's your brightness right there. So you can blend it in a little bit more. And that's really all I wanted to show you just from yesterday, uh, in case you kind of um, didn't catch that. But uh, that's how you can adjust your character's skin color. And that's the, generally the best way to do it. All right, but let's move on. Let's um, start a new project. We'll start from scratch here. And I'm going to throw in a couple of morphs to start off. We're going to start off with our morphs. And we're going to use a special content pack, actually, for this morph, just to kind of keep things uh, shorter because I don't want to customize every morph of my entire orc character. Um, there's actually a full body morph that's provided with our ZBrush learning pack. Um, I'm not sure if I can find that in the, in the content store, but if, I'm sure if you just Google ZBrush learning pack character creator, it'll pop up. Uh, anyways, it contains um, a morph, a full body morph. So if you haven't used morphs yet, you can find all your morphs in the uh, under the modify tab uh, in the morphs section here. And you will find there's full body morphs. There's all kinds of morphs here. We're only gonna worry about this full body morph here right now. And further down, if we make our window a little bit larger there. Let's just go over a little bit here. You can see there's a ZBrush learning assets uh, folder here. So this is again, um, purchased from the content store, or I think it's the software store. And it comes free with uh, certain uh, combos as well. Uh, so what we have here is we have these two uh, um, sliders for orc and ogre. And notice we're under full body here. So if I move the orc slider up, our character is gradually gonna morph into like 
a Shrek kind of character, an ogre. Okay, but notice the the ogre still is wearing underwear, still wearing a bra, um, and the uh, chest is a little bit larger than the average orc, at least a male orc would be, and that's because we're actually still using the uh, the female morph sliders. So, um, if you want to learn, if you want to find out uh, which sliders you're actually using, go up to the top here and go to currently used. You can see we're only using three separate sliders, one for the female body, one for the female face, and then our orc slider. So if I take our female body slider and move it down, he'll grow in height and of course his uh, goodbye uh, chest, uh, female chest for our orc, and then we can, it's still kind of big, but you know, it's just muscle this time. Um, so that's what he looks like without, and he's still wearing the uh, tidy <laughs> the bikini there. Uh, anyways. Sorry to get distracted, but, and then go to currently use, and he's still using the, uh, the, the female facial morphs as well. So you can just uh, take those off and take them down to zero. Coolio. Um, now with this particular morph, there's one issue that I, I noticed a little bit earlier. Um, if you take a close look at the eyes here, there's kind of, a, kind of a layer around the eyes, and this has to do with the eyelid. So you can actually morph and, and uh, modify the, the mesh on the eyes as well, the eyelids and the, and the eyeballs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into uh, under head, we'll go to eye, and you can actually search us for stuff here. You can search in the search field here. I'll just type in eyelid, and you can see th there's still even dozens and dozens and dozens of eyelids. There's so many eyelid, there's so many morph sliders um, that I don't even think you really need all these morph sliders to be honest, but uh, just uh, go through them, find your best, and just kind of remember their names so you can search for them. Um, in this case, it's eyelid inner and eyelid inner depth. You'll see if I move this slider here, it'll increase that or decrease that level. And if it doesn't decrease it enough, you can also go to negative values as well. So there's a, you can enter in the value manually here and type in like negative 100, for example. And you'll notice that here, it's a little bit too, too many artifacts on, on the edge there. So maybe we'll try something a little bit more reasonable like midnight minus 20. Uh, that's not even good enough. So maybe minus 40. And you know, that's, that's decent. What you can also do is you can go in, there's a head in the, if you have headshot, there's also even more sliders in headshot for uh, eyelid inner, okay? And there's eyelid inner upper half like this. Um, and you, you can uh, hide those more, okay? Um, in various ways. Uh, now, I don't wanna spend too much time on that, but there's like just so many sliders. Um, if you just type in like eyelid inner even just very specific. There's even dozens and maybe a hundred or more sliders only for the eyelids. Um, and then there's also another eyelid inner depth as well. Like, but again, keep track of how, how far you're, you're modifying it because uh, you don't want to get those artifacts there. All right, anyways, uh, we're not going to be too um, specific about that just because it's not really relevant um, for the overall orc appearance. But I think we're, we got something pretty decent there. Uh, we could even just go to uh, eye um, I think eyeball, uh, you can even search under, um, let's go to the regular eye here. I just type in depth and you can see there's eye depth as well. So you can increase or decrease the, uh, the eye depth, um, and eyelid depth here as well. So the eyelid depth will bring the motor in. Okay. And let's try like eyeball depth. Okay. So you can even just type in eyeball depth and make those eyeballs further out or further in like that. Okay. And that can often resolve the issue as well. Just the various different ways you can kind of try to troubleshoot um, issues like that when they occur. And, um, you know, as well, if you want, you can do a manual um, edit mesh as well. So uh, with the character selected, I can go to my uh, attributes up here and there's an option to edit mesh. And you can see here, I can edit the mesh. Say for example, I wanted to bring just this one specific part of my eyelid up like this. I'll click on one of these vertexes here. Uh, we currently have vertex edit mesh selected. You can also do by face as well if you wanna do uh, face. And I have soft selection on, which I always recommend having. You can increase your, your radius of your soft selection. So this will increase the amount of uh, polygons that are influenced by your movement. Uh, I'm gonna choose vertex again. We're gonna choose a very, uh, very low uh, radius. Okay, and uh, bias uh, it depends. It just modifies the amount of strength um, for the distance that it is from the selected vertex. It gets a little bit technical, but uh, you can always ask me more later. 
Uh, and then you can press the W hotkey and I can move this. You can see I can move this one specific part of the eyelid like that, okay? And uh, this will be kind of for tweaking it. You can also use E hotkey to rotate it, which is gonna rotate that little area there. It's not much of an effect unless you uh, have more selected, like uh, E, for example, here would uh, rotate it uh, up and down. But generally for uh, for mesh movement, you wanna use the W hotkey for transform and, and uh, move the whole section up or down, okay? So this is for more, much more detailed uh, mesh editing. And uh, yeah, that's uh, something that's very useful uh, when you're when you're like really really tweaking your uh, your mesh and stuff as well. Um, I also want to mention, I think I mentioned this yesterday, but uh, if you go to your scene manager, uh, let's first go out of the edit mesh mode here. Um, if we go to our scene manager here, um, again under your character, the the mesh you'll see the option here for the um, original tessellation or subdivision. If we use a subdivision, it's gonna smooth it out slightly. Okay, so you'll see the eyelid kind of smooth out slightly. And now it's a really smooth kind of uh, eyelid right there. Um, if we don't have that, take a look at what, what it looks like. Original, a little bit jagged there. Okay, so generally what you wanna do is you wanna use a subdivision um, when you have a situation like this. If you wanna focus really, really closely and on the eyes. Okay. Um, all right, so I think we're done with that. Um, there's also the eyelashes in this case. Now there are morph sliders for the eyelashes, but in this case, we don't want eye eyelashes altogether. We want them to be totally gone. Um, so if you want like something like that totally gone, the easiest way to do it is to go to your modify tab with your character selected, uh, go up to materials, and you'll find we have um, uh, eyelashes here. Okay, there's an eyelash material and just basically go down and change the opacity to zero. Okay. And once you do that, your eyelashes are gonna to be totally gone, all right? Because I don't know an orc alive that has luxurious, nice looking eyelashes. In fact, I don't even know if there are any orcs alive anymore, but uh, <laughs> anyways, that's how you get rid of the eyelashes, all right? Um, orcs don't really take care of their eyelashes. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay, we're gonna uh, move into the morphs now, the uh, additional morphs. Now, um, there's ways to, there's ways to uh, adjust your morphs really easily. If you just want to kind of look, uh, mess around, kind of see what things look like, you can go up here to the morph. There's a morph uh, tar a toggle gizmo on and off up here. If you click that on, then when you mouse over your character's uh, face, it's going to highlight different areas. And these are different areas that you can move around if you click and drag them. Um, say, for example, I wanted to make my character's nose larger, then I can just uh, click and drag it like that. Okay. Click and drag it out, give it more of a hawk-like nose look. Okay, I can even take that forehead and, and uh, bring it down or, or bring it up, okay? In this case, he's an angry orc, so he'd probably want it to be further down. Um, you know, ver various things like that. If you go from the front view, uh, if I click and drag on the lower part of the nose, I can increase the, the nostril size. And uh, the entire mouth, I can uh, make the lips larger or smaller, uh, depending on uh, you know what I'm looking for. And I can even move the entire mouth up or down as well. Um, okay, so like various things like that. The ears, another example, I can click and drag those and move those out. Now, there are additional morphs that you can kind of uh, look for. And if I go into my morphs now and I use, uh, just uh, clear my search field there, when it currently used, now you'll see there's a tons of more, there's a ton of different morphs that I use. Even the nostril width appears. So as, as, as soon as I modify any of these, you're gonna see the value appear right here. So watch the nostril width. Okay. And uh, that'll be uh, down here somewhere. So there's just so many um, different morphs that I already used um, under currently used. Okay. And uh, yeah, so on and so forth. You can also go into, uh, the various sections here, like say for example, I wanted his, uh, let's go to chin under the headshot section. Um, I'm gonna turn off the morph toggle gizmo right now. Okay, just because we're gonna use the uh, manual morph sliders now. If we do like chin height, for example, you can see what that does right there. We can give him a more uh, broad chin, maybe chin width. Okay, you can see here, we can give him more of a kind of a Superman chin like that. And uh, you can even go into, uh, um, if you just type, go into the headshot main section and type in like jaw, you'll get all kinds of different uh, jaw stuff up here as well. Like jaw scale. Okay, you'll see you can really 
max that jaw out like that. And it looks a little bit strange because he has really nice feminine skin and we're modifying an orc. <laughs> so just bear with me and we'll change the skin in just a moment. Um, and here I'm going to just uh, adjust the ears. So I'm going to type in ear or I'm going to type in elf because there's there's a couple of elf template ears um, that you can use to kind of emphasize this as well. So you can elf ear like this and an elf ear long. We can really stretch those elf ears out. Uh, and then there's also a content pack called Baby Luna you can find in the content store. There's also additional elf stuff. Dawn is another uh, elf kind of character. Uh, again, just be, be you know cognizant of how far you're stretching the ears because the mesh might stretch a little bit too far. Uh, but you can always reapply that later on. Uh, but anyways, okay. So, uh, you know, mess around with the York, uh, see how you like it. Um, you can adjust the eye, you know, distance and, and width and stuff like that as well. Uh, one final thing I'll take a look at is maybe, uh, you know, the eyes. Eye scale is, is one to make the eyes larger or smaller, okay? Probably not too small because he's kind of a vicious looking character. But uh, I think there's uh, Squint. No, uh, narrow. Oh, that's under uh, headshot. Uh, under eye headshot, there's a uh, squint, I believe. There you go, squint scale. So you have this kind of like, uh, <laughs> you can make him like really suspicious looking. It's like, oh, I don't believe it. Okay, anyways, so enough about the morphs. I think you kind of get the picture. You can just search for whatever you want. Uh, we don't really need to go into more detail on that. And again, there's also morphs for the body, all right? so. Um, the body, same deal. Uh, you can just use your morph uh, gizmo to uh, click and drag and, and increase those shoulders, that shoulder size. You can um, give it, make his chest like larger or smaller, okay? In this case, you don't want to make it too large. The neck can be uh, stretched out and uh, you can modify it in like so many different ways. Um, it's really better that I just kind of let you explore it on your own time because there's literally thousands and thousands of, of more sliders that you can uh, use to adjust. Um, it takes some time to find your favorite ones, but they're all under body. Okay, so like there's glutes and there's different content packs here as well. Um, you can even add your own morphs, which I've done in the past. Um, just test morphs and everything like that uh, and so on and so forth. Anyways, okay, so uh, let's move on to the skin gen stuff now, all right? so. Uh, back to the content manager here. Now, um, this this content pack, this ZBrush content pack, um, Essentials content pack, comes with a couple of uh, different skin bases. And these are the overall skin bases. So if we go into overall, is it overall? Yeah, overall. And uh, go into normal, there's this ZBrush learning assets pack here. Okay. And here you'll find the high resolution for Orc and uh, or lower resolution for Orc and Ogre. These are 2048 and the high resolution will be 4K. Now, what's gonna happen is because we have CC3 plus base is our, is our main, uh, is our default base now. If you click on, if you double click on one of these, you can see at the bottom left, it says CC3. So this is actually mapped to the CC3, the older base. And that becomes an issue because if you try to map uh, an older texture or an older material to the new base, you're gonna have some, some messing up with the UV. And what it has, what it actually has to do is it has to bake it to the uh, to the new to the new mesh, and unfortunately, baking it takes quite a while. It takes about uh, you know three to four or five minutes maybe, and I don't want to make you guys wait around for that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you if, if I, for example, a hypothetical, if I uh, click and click and drag this uh, orc 4K onto my character, this is what would happen. Okay, <laughs> after about four or five minutes of uh, waiting. I have this pre-skin gem. Yes, okay, good. Uh, we need to save this. And the character might look a little bit different. Oh, I forgot to add the teeth and, and, the, and the different eyes as well. I'll show you where you can find those uh, teeth and eyes in just a moment uh, once this loads up. Because uh, there's, you know, obviously this orc doesn't look like a full orc unless he has battle teeth, huge tusks coming out of his, uh, his teeth there. And of course, you can customize your teeth uh, fully and you know customize the mesh. You can export them and import them back in. Okay, so this is what it would look like. All right, so this is the character that I made um, prior to this, and those those teeth and the eyes are the eyes aren't really changed. The teeth are though, and the teeth can be found under uh, your content manager um, over here under uh, base. And under base, there's a section for teeth and for eyes. Okay, so the teeth 
Uh, under the main teeth folder, if you go down, you'll find some different teeth. I believe we used one of these yesterday for the old lady character, um, but there's also one for, uh, ba -da -ba -ba. just minimize the eye one. There you go, ZBrush learning assets right there. So those are the org teeth you can apply and this is, this is what they look like. We'll just color those a little bit later on um, and uh, kind of uh, show modifications for the eyes as well. But uh, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go, just go through a quick uh, little a section here, quick little area where I'm just gonna apply some of the stuff that we did uh, yesterday. So you're familiar with you know adding the pores onto the character. Um, I'm gonna use a couple of templates just to save time because we can uh, move on to other things later on. Uh, let's go to, uh, where were we at here? Oh yeah, skin gen. Uh, we don't need to activate it yet. We can actually go to our content manager first and uh, under skin and we're going to twirl this up, make things simple. And under normal effects, under facial wrinkles. Okay, we have some facial wrinkle templates here. And again, there's stuff that's under the uh, realistic human skin pack, which is what I'm going to use here. I'm gonna use this, uh, let's see which one looks kind of badass here. I think this first one looks kind of fairly badass. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna load up skin gen and it's going to uh, apply a couple of different layers of wrinkles. And then you can, of course, you know, layer onto that more different uh, wrinkle layers as well if you want. Um, but I'm just gonna go into more customization stuff because I think you guys all kind of know how to uh, simply apply wrinkle layers to your character. Nothing really too difficult there. Um, all right, so you see those two wrinkle layers um, and they appear, of course, in the skin section. So uh, wrinkle broad is the first one. Uh, we can increase that opacity to make it stronger or decrease the opacity. Okay, increase and zero. So, you know, if this is kind of a very broad, uh, uh, higher level wrinkle, they're not as detailed. And then there's the wrinkle fine here. And this one's gonna be more detailed around the eyes, especially, okay. So if we take that off, you'll see the big difference there. All right, and of course you can go back to your content manager. You can layer on more wrinkles on top of that. You can put wrinkles on top of wrinkles on top of wrinkles. Um, maybe like forehead wrinkles might be interesting for this guy. Let's try the uh, forehead wrinkle too. And of course add it. It'll just add some more forehead wrinkles up here. Now he already had some wrinkles and that's because they were, they were already baked into the skin base. So we just added those forehead wrinkles on. Maybe throw on some frown wrinkles. I've actually never, it looks like I've never tried this frown wrinkle. Let's see what it looks like on this guy. Probably making a little, little bit more frowny looking. All right, kind of emphasizes the, the eyes there. That's kind of nice. All right, just makes him look a little bit more aged and, and uh, angry there. So he's looking more orc-like every day. Okay, so what else do we have? Let's go to normal. Uh, let's go to our content manager here. And uh, we're gonna twirl up facial wrinkles. And what we're gonna do now is go into uh, noise here. And there's some noise. We're gonna talk about the noise on the body actually in just a moment here. Um, but I'm gonna go to the normal body here. And there's a, there's a section, uh, something on a realistic human skin called vascular. Okay, so vascular is pretty cool. It actually creates sort of like a veiny look to your character. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply that vascular heavy uh, template. And this is going to affect both the body and the head. So let's zoom out. Not enough to see him in his, Oh, why not? Uh, there we go. <laughs> I think it's just funny with him wearing those uh, underwear. Anyways, we're gonna apply this vascular heavy here. And um, of course we're going to add it to the current layer. You'll, you'll see some vascular uh, network of, of veins on his uh, chest and also on his, on his head there. Okay, so this is a, just a normal effect that we're going to add to our character. So you can see the, the uh, faint uh, vascular veins appear on the chest. And the ones on the, on the head are a bit more prominent. So if I select the body vascular here, um, take the opacity down, notice it's, it's going to link, it's linked. There's a link controls right here. It's linked to body vascular. You can see even though we're in the head material, it's, it's linked to the body, okay? So there's link controls and it currently is linked. So it's going to affect both the body and the head simultaneously. Okay, so let's take that to maximum. And we can go down, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna press control uh, minus here to uh, minimize this. And under texture settings, you'll find, uh, you can modify the different areas individually, front, back, uh, forehead, whatever. Uh, there's global settings, the normal strength, if we increase that or decrease that, you can see the result, particularly on the neck here. This one's kind of quite prominent, okay? And uh, 
Uh, note that these ones down here are only going to modify for the for the head. Okay, so these little sections down here are only going to modify for the head. Um, there's other things that'll modify both, but not not these ones. Uh, so let's go to global settings here, um, and there's tint. You can change the color of it, so you can make it much more much stronger. And again, notice that the uh, body is not changing; only the head veins are. So we can focus on the head right now. Right. And for this one, uh, you know, you, you don't really want uh, much, excuse me, you don't really want much tint on, on these veins. You kind of want them to be a more natural skin color. We can even darken them a little bit, like a darker green, something like that. And uh, take that opacity, like very, very slight. Um, and uh, the global settings, I want to take that normal maybe down a little bit. Uh, we don't want it to be too crazy because um, when you get like harsh light shadows on it, it kind of goes a little bit too exaggerated. So you can always tweak that later. And then of course, under basic, um, again, you can kind of add additional normal effects on it as well. Uh, so that's not really uh, useful in this case. Um, but we already have the, the basics there under global settings. Um, but yeah, you can kind of get the point there. And then if you go to the head, uh, the body material, there's also the same thing under body. So you'll see the body vascular layer under body as well. And then you can modify those on top of that. So let's go down here to our chest and control minus. And uh, you'll see the same thing effect here. Okay, so normal strength and blur, tint, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but again, you want to try and make a blend in. So uh, there you go. Uh, in terms of the body as well, there's a section here, like I mentioned earlier for noise. And uh, for our character's body, um, I'm going to throw on some uh, rough noise, uh, just add it on. Okay, again, make sure that you're in, in the body section um, in order to uh, add that to your body. And the body noise is kind of like a discoloration. If I increase the opacity, you can see it a little bit more. Okay, so it's kind of like more like a textured discoloration. And I, I like this. I think it kind of adds a lot of roughness to your character's, uh, to your character's body, okay? But obviously not too much, just a slight touch of it we'll be fine, all right? And I think that's about all we're gonna talk about with the body, except for, uh, we'll throw on a couple things onto the body a little bit later, but I wanna um, really just emphasize the face right now. So let's go to our uh, heads. And a couple things I'm gonna add on the face. We're gonna add some uh, roughness um, and some uneven color as well. So back into the content manager here. Um, Nothing really to do with levels. Um, if we go to levels, you can see we can add a few. Um, this is again the, the the pores on on your on your character's face. If we go to like secondary normal M, for example, um, it's going to add a few more pores. But this character is is so um, you can see the opacity right there, just around the eyes. So not really that noticeable. Again, this character is gonna be painted up and all like covered with dirt a little bit later on. So these small details, we don't even really need. Um, let's go back to content here. Um, and then, and then there's a body de a rough details as well. Uh, nothing much uh, to do with the levels. Um, in skin detail, uh, coloration is one that I really like to use. Now under realistic human skin, if we go down, there's one called uh, uneven two colors. And what this does, is if we uh, apply this to our character's face, we can actually uh, apply splotchy splotchiness to the character's face. This is one I really like because it's you can really customize it a lot. So you can see right now it's currently neon green. Uh, it looks like he just got nailed with a bunch of paintballs. Uh, but yeah, obviously that's not the color we want. So let's uh, control minus that. The layer mask and under, under general settings here, we don't need to worry about that. The pattern is fine. Again, you can customize all of these maps and I'll show you how to customize maps a little bit later on. Um, but I want to kind of rush through this because we have a lot of other stuff to get through. Um, and the pattern, uh, our general settings should have, uh, where's our color down here? There you go. Okay, so there's dual color right here. There's a primary color and a secondary color. You can even see if, we, if you zoom in really close, you can see the orangish color as a secondary color there. Our primary color, we're gonna change this to like a dark greenish, almost like a forest kind of green like this. And then secondary color will change to something even like, you know, very similar in, in uh, like that. Okay, maybe we can even maybe, uh, let's keep it dark like this. 
Okay, now the opacity, you can kind of decrease the opacity like this. So it still looks kind of splotchy, all right? And don't worry, we can actually transfer this down to our body as well if we wanted to. You can see it currently only affects the head. So like this. Now, the cool thing about this is you can actually go down um, even further under material and there's a normal strength here as well. So if I increase that normal strength like this, we can actually um, see those splotches come out. So you can use this to create kind of like uneven sort of uh, splotches on your character's face um, like that. So obviously the, the high normal strength like this is gonna look really weird, um, but we are gonna just do something a little bit like this a little bit later on. But you know, you can just use this to add a little bit of additional texture to your, to your appearance of your, of your character. And it looks even better if it's a little bit darker, actually. You can expand it like this to create, it looks like he's made of limestone or something now. But uh, you, you, you kind of get the point, you can uh, expand this. And this is one of my favorite ways um, to actually create sort of an additional sort of texture look to our character. Um, you make it like metallic looking or, or rough looking as well. But of course this is gonna be rough since it's our character's face. And uh, let's take our primary color down a little bit darker. Here. Okay, I think that looks kind of cool, just like that, kind of splotchy. And um, you know, if you think this looks really cool and you want to uh, transfer it down to your to your body, you can right click on the on the layer, this uneven color layer, right click on it and just duplicate it. And it's going to have double double the effect for a moment there. And you can see it creates a copy, and then just right click on that copy, and then go ahead and move to uh, the body. Okay, so once you move it to the body, it's gonna transfer there and it's gonna be have that effect on the body as well. So now you see some splotchiness on the body. And of course you can also move it to the arms. So we can transfer it from the body to the arms, which are the blank spot right there. Duplicate and transfer to uh, move to arm like that. Okay, and uh, you have to be aware that if there's gonna be some kind of, uh, you know, uh, patching, patchiness. So you have to use the randomize um, function within these. Which one are we at right now? The arm. Um, yeah, use like randomize this and, and adjust the UV method uh, in, in various ways, uh, just to kind of uh, blend it. Uh, the, the blending is a little bit too. So maybe, uh, you know, adjust the opacity to something a little bit less. So it's less noticeable. And there's also different patterns you can use as well. Um, randomization. Uh, down here, there's pattern disorder, um, position disorder rather, uh, random remove, just various different ways that you can uh, modify it. And I don't want to go into all of them right now because you can kind of explore all those parameters on your own time. I don't want to get bogged down in all the parameters here. But uh, this one, of course, we probably want to decrease the opacity slightly. Now, even something like that adds a little bit of extra touch to it. Um, pattern scale. Um, so pattern scale you can use to uh, avoid those um, kind of uh, layering or not layering issues, uh, patching or patching issues on, on the side there. Um, okay, we'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, I just want to show you can how you can transfer them. And I think our main one is for our head is a little bit too strong for opacity anyways, because it's kind of outshining the other ones. So yeah, I'll take that down. All right, uh, maybe even like a different coloration one that might be uh, uh, might be better, uh, something a little darker. Anyways, we'll leave it like it is right now since we're gonna throw a bunch of stuff on top of it later on. Uh, okay, so what's next? Let's go to, uh, we'll just basically add some scars and some tattoos onto our character now, and then we'll go to our uh, um, customized normal map. So I'm gonna quickly go over to content here, um, twirl that up. Uh, now, now under acquired is where you'll find your scars. So here you can find some dirt and scars and tattoos. Uh, tattoo under realistic human skin. I'll just throw this on to my character's arm here. This decorate ring. And again, these are these come with the uh, content pack, so you can throw that on. And there's tons of different ways you can customize it. Um, you'll see that it will apply. Uh, where is it? Over in the head. Uh, you have to go to your arm material and it'll apply to your arm material. Um, of course, it's on top of the actual skin. So you want to keep that layer right there. Uh, you can adjust all sorts of values here 
you know, I don't want to go into the detail on all these. You can mess around with that on your own time, but uh, so many different values there. And then the next thing we'll just do is, uh, let's see, we'll have some scars on our uh, character's face here. Really quick, we'll just throw on that scar. Uh, we'll go back to the head. And uh, put a scar. I, kind of, I mean, two, there's two scar templates that come embedded, but uh, with the realistic human skin pack, like I mentioned, pretty useful to, to have. We'll throw on that skin last, scar laceration on the cheek there. And uh, there you go. Okay, so right there, the scar laceration. And uh, right now it's fairly, fairly large. You can uh, adjust the details on it. Um, it's amazing really how many options you have for this specific scar. Um, <laughs> to be honest, you can just scale it down first and it'll scale towards the center of the face. You can adjust the width and the height, of course. Um, offsets, you can change the offset rotation, um, bevel expansion. So there's, you can make it a more larger scar. If you expand the bevel, you can use it to create sort of like burns like this on your character's face, like larger burns. Okay. Just be aware of there's, there's just so many options you can use for, for this. Um, make it a little bit more uh, detailed there. Uh, I, I won't worry about all this other stuff really. There's a, a section for the scab just by itself. Okay. You can expand or uh, remove the scab, um, soften it or lighten it. You can barely see the difference. I mean, it's just uh, almost too many details for the scar. Oh, swollen tissue is one you can uh, really kind of see the difference. If we expand the swollen tissue, you can see it creates sort of like a pattern around the actual, like almost like an infection around the uh, scar there, around the injury. Okay, so there's that uh, expansion there. You can blur it or sharpen it. Okay, just be aware of all that stuff. I like to have this expanded. And of course you can change the color on this and the pattern and, and stuff like that. Just be aware of all these different options you have. Tons and tons of different options. And of course, um, you can always customize your own and, and throw them in there as well. Uh, customize your own uh, uh, texture maps for your scars and whatnot. Um, okay, so I think that's about it for um, um, the textures or for our uh, skin rather. Uh, well, there's one more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to load up Photoshop here and I'm going to show you how to create a custom normal map like really quickly for your character's uh, face. Um, you saw the uh, when we uh, increase the normal value for our uneven skin uh, layer later uh, previously, it just kind of extruded a little bit. I'm going to show you how you can create one um, really easily using a custom tool. Um, so again, that uh, that three in one pack or that essential skin pack contains custom tools in the content manager as well. Uh, there's skin jam tools down here, and you'll see here under part. If we go down, we'll see part normal plus, and there's part normal, part normal plus, and this is just how you how you can generate your own normal map on your character's head. So. If I apply this to my character, right now it's currently on the head. We only want it to apply to the head. Um, you'll see the uh, the default template uh, normal map here, which will have <laughs> looks really strange on our character. He has number one, two, three, four, five all over his face. And there's our layer right there. And you can see there's our normal map with uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, indicating the different areas that it, that it applies to on the face, on the face mesh. Uh, okay, so our job is to create a new neural map and we're going to just make our character look even more ugly. And uh, the way we can do that, we need to get our UV, uh, UV base map first. And to do that, we need to go to our skin base down here. And is Photoshop up? Yep. Um, in your skin base section, you'll see a base color map. You can just right click on that and you can launch texture. Okay, any of those maps, you can really launch texture, um, but it'll launch the UV map along, you'll see the UV reference map here of the face along with the actual image, right? And the reason for, for this is just, you need, you need the size and the dimensions and you need to know kind of where all the facial features are. In this case, I'm just gonna wreck it because I'm not really an artist by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm just gonna create a couple of layers here. Um, forget our first layer. And this is the layer we're gonna just apply a couple of different kind of like warts to this layer to, for lack of a better word. Um, 
So I'm going to use my brush tool. Make sure I have white selected because white is what we're going to use to create a normal map in Photoshop. Uh, I'm going to choose my brush. Let's, I don't know, something like this one. Let's see what this does. Oh, it's too, uh, I need to find one that's a uh, splatter. Let's open up our brush tab here. Something like uh, this. Oop. Oop. Again, I'm like terrible with Photoshop. Which one was I using before? Um, let's make sure the, uh, there we go. Just increase the brush size. That's good. Those are going to be our warts <laughs> okay. on the character. I don't want wet edges. Okay. And so we're just going to, let's try something a bit more accurate, smaller. Um, just be aware that these, the size of these uh, splotches are going to also be the size of your, uh, the warts on your character's head. So put some on his back of his head as well. This is going to be super messy. So apologies in advance. Um, but we're just going to work with that. And uh, there we go. And I'll close down my uh, brush settings here. So we have all this stuff on his face um, and we need to create another layer. Uh, and this layer is going to be just full of black. Okay, so we'll select black from our swatch. And uh, use fill and just fill it, fill her up with black. Uh, Um, oh, let's delete this layer. There we go. Okay. Uh, we'll just get rid of this uh, little area here. Awesome. Then, okay, there we go. <laughs> so we're going to create a normal map from this. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is merge these layers. Uh, Shift select, right click, and just merge the layers. And then we're going to go up to filter and I'm going to go to 3D and generate normal map. All right. And uh, it's going to generate a normal map uh, from this. It, uh, we'll see how it looks when we uh, import it in. So we're basically just going to replace that one, two, three, four map you saw earlier. I probably could have spaced this out a bit more, but again, you know, um, we're going to work with this for now. And uh, you can adjust the uh, levels here, the contrast details for different parts of it. Uh, I'll be fine. And I'm just going to press OK. I don't want to spend too much time on this since we're a little bit short on time. So this is going to be our pimply uh, wart kind of map, normal map for our character. So we'll just save this out as a PNG. Uh, to, let's do our desktop here. And I'll just call it uh, normal yay. Whoops. If I can spell normal yay. All right. And uh, then we're going to, in uh, character creator, Move my zoom panel first. In that uh, normal tool right there, we're going to replace the normal map. Just double click it and go into normal, yay. Okay, so now we have uh, this discoloration. And uh, the reason this, for the discoloration is because there's actually two colors on this. Uh, so let's go down to the normal strength. We can adjust that to make those uh, bumps, you know, more prominent like that. Uh, there's color, there's uh, the first color tint. Let's change that from this color to something, uh, we can even just decrease the opacity as well. Maybe something a bit uh, lighter like this. You can see the result that it has. Generally you try and wanna keep with the, uh, the color of your uh, natural skin, um, but there you go. Okay, so you know, fairly uh, gross, gross looking um, uh, warts on the character's uh, head there. Uh, now, in addition, what you can do is, uh, I'm just, I'm, in this case, I'm actually gonna just apply a special normal map that I already uh, created, um, just to kind of uh, get rid of all these warts here. So there's one that I have in my uh, webinar folder here. And this one's a bit more like, a uh, um, bit more normal. Okay, so you can see here, this one has sort of like a tribal sort of uh, pattern on it. All right, and this one I spent a bit more time on. <laughs> so this one's kind of cool. And that's how you can, you know, just generate your own normal maps really and uh, get things taken care of uh, from that point. And uh, yeah, 
Um, I think that's about it. We're going to go ahead and throw some makeup on and then we'll get into uh, the other uh, eye stuff. So let's go ahead to makeup and we're going to throw some quick makeup on. Uh, tribal paint in this case, go to your content here under makeup. And again, under the uh, makeup and SFX, that's part of the content pack that I mentioned earlier. There's uh, tribal paint. Um, I'm just going to throw this uh, face paint on here onto our character. And uh, once we do that, we'll throw on some dirt on top of it. And again, this is fully customizable in terms of colors and, and uh, opacity and all that stuff. Uh, we'll keep it the way it is for now. So we'll throw some uh, tribal paint on. Um, and on top of that, I think the uh, dirt is in a different one. Camouflage, right? So there's this camouflage one. Um, whoops, I clicked. Uh, something like this mud one looks pretty cool. So you can throw some mud on top of that, make them look a little bit rougher. Okay, so now he's starting to really come into his own here. Uh, and there's three various mud layers that we can mess with, but I won't worry too much about it. Uh, and you can see that we have the paint layer below the mud layer. Okay, so one is on top of the other. Um, you can change the order of that if you want, but uh, you know, this, I think this one looks pretty cool here. Um, okay, so I think that's about it. We're gonna just do the eyes really quick and then we're gonna show the, the rendering stuff. So um, let's do the teeth actually. The teeth are a little bit too white in, in uh, my opinion. Uh, and a little bit too dull as well. Uh, a couple of things I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure those are selected. Uh, let's go out of uh, our act or um, our appearance editor there, or skin gen editor. It used to be called the appearance editor. And we're going to just um, all all the modifications, material modifications we're going to make to our teeth and eyes are going to be done using the traditional uh, texture maps. Uh, okay, so let's select our teeth. Uh, if it doesn't select, we can go to our scene manager and select it. Um, and we're going to go to our materials here, the T selected. And you can see uh, they, they currently use the traditional uh, shader type. Now you don't really need to uh, change this. You can adjust this to uh, the digital uh, shader type if you want by going to shader type, uh, digital human teeth. And the advantage of the digital human teeth is they kind of have subsurface scattering um, on the edges of the teeth. so. You know, teeth are obviously not um, completely opaque. There's certain, you know, light that can get to certain parts of it, especially on the outer edges. So that'll allow you to do that. And that's, I won't go into detail on that right now. Uh, I'm just gonna show you, uh, if I go to my blend map here, I'm just gonna load in a custom blend map. And we're going to uh, throw that onto our uh, teeth there. You can see pretty ugly looking. Uh, uh, let's change our diffuse color to something a little bit like yellowish. Okay, and you'll see that the natural color will become kind of yellowish there. Not red, maybe you know, something like yellowish. Okay, and even the teeth inside have some yellowish stuff on them as well. Uh, and this blend, uh, again, we can adjust the strength of it to be stronger or weaker. Uh, the color is black right now. We can choose addition or we can choose overlay. Um, but you know, maybe you want to have something a bit like, like red for blood, but in this case, I'm just kind of using this. And if it's, uh, you know, you want to change the UV, you can go here and, uh, adjust the UV to, you know, counterclockwise or something like this. Okay. Just to, you know, distribute the uh, blend map a little differently and, uh, upper teeth will do the same thing just to give them so they don't feel left out. Uh, again, you know, Nothing to worry about really there. Um, and, and last thing, of course, if you want to adjust the mesh for your teeth, you can go to Edit Mesh. Um, like I showed earlier, I would just select the edge of it and maybe bring it up like that. Give it a bit more of a threatening look to it. You can't mirror this because they're not the same on both sides. So just be aware of that. If you, if you don't have the same um, mesh on both sides, you can't really mirror it. All right, that looks fine to me. Cool. All right. So now his teeth are a bit sharper looking. Uh, we'll go to the eyes here. And uh, a couple things with the eyes. Um, the eyes are a little bit complex. Um, just go to your materials here. And currently these are using a digital human uh, shader. Uh, we don't have the eyes selected. We have the occlusion layer selected, which is very important to differentiate. Uh, let's go to our eye here. 
we don't need to worry about the occlusion layer at all. Um, just select the eye and go to modify. Now uh, there's digital human eye here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add a glow map into the eye. Okay, a red glow map. And it's not gonna show anything yet. Okay, because what I need to do is I need to go down here to my opacity and take that all the way up to 100. Okay, for the glow map, uh, for all, all the uh, um, materials rather, all the textures. So take that up to glow map right there. Uh, if you don't want any base color, like if you don't want the original blue color, you can just kind of take that out. And you can see the one eye there is, you know, glowing red. If you want it to just be glowing red with like no semblance of humanity or whatsoever, you can, you can of course um, take that base color and uh, reduce the uh, value right there. Um, again, you know, maybe I want to do that in this case. Let's just uh, take it out. Uh, the digital human eye material there and uh, take that one out as well. Now, um, yeah, it looks pretty cool here. Um, that's the eyes taken care of. And again, you can adjust uh, all sorts of other values down here as well. Uh, one thing you can adjust is the iris brightness. So if you go to iris here under shader settings, you can see iris color brightness. You can adjust that. It has more of an effect if you still have the base color map in there, but uh, <laughs> this is another way to, to brighten the, those irises there, okay? Looks fairly demonic enough, so I think we're we're safe here. All right, yeah, he looks like he's ready to eat some pilgrims or or knights or whatever he eats. Uh, okay, so I think that's about it. Um, and the last thing I'm going to talk about here is uh, just showing how to adjust the lighting. And we're going to load up iClone here in the background. Uh, where are we? There we go. And uh, once iClone's loaded up, we'll bring him into iClone. Um, but for now, if you want to, uh, you know, take a look at the atmospheres for this different character, um, let's throw some, let's throw like a piece of clothing on him just to make him look a bit more intimidating. Uh, I'm really smart gallery here. Oh, what's it called? Um, a little clothing here. There's a pack here that is from uh, Surge 3D. It has a, oh, it's the Barbarian one here. Barbarian leathers. <laughs> I like this, I like this uh, kind of whatever this is called, pole drawn, I think. I'll just throw that onto him anyways. This is something you don't want to fit to the body because it's obviously a piece of armor. Unless you have tight fitting leather armor, and then you want to just uh, apply it to your character. And you'll see that it's actually a little bit too large or a little bit too small for him. So again, what you can do is just go to modify and edit your mesh, or rather to conform in this case. And lazy way is just to increase the size like this, like I am, like I always do. Zoop, zoop, zoop. All right, there we go, good enough. Uh, and still, still looks pretty good. And we'll zoom in on his face right here. And then we can, you know, use some atmosphere templates. Like, uh, let's go to our contents, into the stage elements. And under atmosphere, there's one for uh, rear lighting, hard rear lighting, uh, sub sub uh, subsurface scattering back. Okay, so there you go. Um, with this kind of lighting, you can really see the effect of those uh, um, that normal map on our character's head there. And you can even see the subsurface scattering through the ears. Uh, the slight pinkness of the ears there, that's the light going through, or you know, simulating a simulation of the light going through the eyes right there. Um, and of course, you can see those nice um, glowing eyes. Now, if, for example, you wanted to uh, um, render this in an eye ray, for example, um, I'll show you really quickly how to do that with the eyes, just because some, some people asked me last time about how to do the eye ray render. So, um, and then we'll end off and we'll go to the Q&A. Uh, with eye ray, you can just go to your eye ray, or rather to your eye settings, make sure your eyes are selected again, uh, and then go to modify. In this case, you have to go to your main, your main eye here, okay? And you can just delete the, the base color. And again, load in that glow map. Uh, you don't have to worry about opacity in this one. Delete that, still the glow map. And uh, then we'll go to our eye ray settings here. 
where are they? Oh, there we go. Okay, and in the uh, main section here, um, with the IR and the IL selected, you can control select them. Uh, go to multiplier, and at the bottom there is a, an emissive multiplier. You can make them sort of emissive to whatever level you want. All right, and then we can just give it a preview and it'll uh, load up with the emissive lighting in uh, iRay in just a moment. All right, so that's really all I wanted to show you guys. I think we finished uh, right on time here. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm open to answer any questions you guys have now. So I'll, as we wait for our uh, iRay render to uh, to load there, you can see it's looking uh, pretty funky. Maybe the eyes are a bit too emissive, but uh, uh, you get the point there. And uh, probably what I'd want to do is adjust the shadowing uh, quite significantly in this one. Um, yeah, let's get to the questions here while this kind of renders on my on this 1070 GTX. Oh, and I was going to take it into iClone as well if you wanted to see a bit more of uh, lighting, but I think, you know, lighting is fairly straightforward, to be honest, in, in most cases. Um, I wanted to mention as well, if, if, these, if I had, had used the um, digital shader for the teeth, you'd be able to see some subsurface scattering on those teeth, which is uh, quite nice. We can actually even just switch that over, I think. Um, you kind of get the point here. You see those eyes. And the cool thing about um, rendering an eye ray is that those eyes are actually refracting off of you know the skin on the character's uh, face there. So once it finishes rendering in like a couple few minutes or so, you know, you probably want to do this on something like an RTX, but um, yeah, that's the kind of result you would get. Uh, some really kind of, you know, cool demonic looking eyes and a nice subsurface scattering on the ears as well. All right, um, let's just go ahead and uh, into uh, care. Oops, what did I do there? Move my C manager. Let's move this down here somewhere. Oh gosh, darn it. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, questions, Q and A. We're going to the Q and A right now. So let's get ahead and get this started. Um, Stephane asks, is there a way to edit the upper and lower tear ducts, uh, otherwise known as the punctum, the size, position, size, in and out, angle? Um, probably. I've never, <laughs> I can't really uh, remember a time where I've uh, modified the uh, tear ducts, but again, it's probably something you can just search for. Uh, let me just uh, change my lighting scenario here. Um, atmosphere. Let's go to uh, something top light here. Oops. Oh, we're, uh, well, that doesn't look good at all. Um, let's just use the default one. Oh, we could have just even gone to up here um, auxiliary mode to get rid of all of our lighting. But now we're going to wait for this one to load. There you go, looking pretty cool. Obviously, I'd want to tweak values on that to make it shine a bit more. Off. Maybe the red reflection off the teeth would look really cool. Um, you know, yeah, let's close that down for now. Um, I'm going to take this back to uh, backlighting and then use auxiliary mode here. So for uh, tear duct, whoops, tear duct lighting or tear duct lighting, <laughs> tear ducts. Yeah, again, I would just go into um, our morphs, modify morphs, and you can even just, uh, under actor, the main section, you can probably just type tear duct. Oops. There's tear duct scale, tear duct in, out, depth, curve, angle, width. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of them. I think some of these are included with the uh, headshot. Uh, probably found under I. Yeah, so there's these four that are included in the, in the main uh, by default. And then there's a few more that are probably included under headshot. Yeah, so those headshots are quite, quite a bit more comprehensive in terms of adjusting. So again, with the headshot um, plugin, you'll get the morph, it's called morph 1000 plus um, collection of uh, 1000 plus morphs. I'm not even sure how many morphs it is, but it's over a thousand. Um, and yeah, you'll get more and more detailed stuff uh, with that pack there. 
Uh, question from Pete. Have you had any experience using the Anima 4 crowd generator with iClone? Uh, the pro version does work with FBX format. Oh, the Anima. Yes, I have heard of this actually. I haven't used it myself, but uh, well, I can actually click it from the, before I couldn't uh, click it. So this is a, a crowd generator. Yeah, we, we've actually um, um, been in touch with these people to be honest with you. Uh, and this is something that is, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but it could or could not be coming with uh, the next iClone, <laughs> as far as I know. I'll give you a little teaser, um, but uh, stuff like this is yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be working together with uh, um, people to generate kind of re realistic crowds like this. And uh, so, <coughs> excuse me, that's something to look forward to there. Um, I'll throw this in the chat window for those of you who uh, want to take a look on your own time. Because this is really the kind of the future of uh, where a lot of the stuff is going. All right, look at that dance. Uh, okay. Uh, another question from Pete: For the ability to export a purchased avatar for editing in a third-party program, do you have to have the export export version of a CC3 avatar? Um, this is a good question because it, it, it actually is, is a little bit tricky for, for people who may be new to our software. Um, whenever you purchase uh, third-party software from the content store, you need to make sure that you purchase the export license. Uh, the export license will allow you to export to any other software you want. For uh, on our end, all you need is a uh, character creator pipeline. As long as you have pipeline, you can export any FBX. Um, uh, what was I going to type in? Content store. Um, yeah, so make sure you have the export license when you export. Um, some of these, some of this content may use uh, base content uh, from like one of our uh, one of our bases, our cloth bases. In that case, in that case, you also have to make sure you have the license for that cloth base as well. So this all goes through like DRM protection stuff, uh, and it's uh, it's wackadoodle, man. Um, yeah, but uh, make sure that you have, uh, generally when you, um, for example, if I click on something, I'm gonna try and find an example here. Maybe this uh, man in jeans. Uh, let me close down my chat window here. So you'll have the eye content version and the export version. Again, you need the export version to export to other software. You can learn more about it and, and most, uh, most products will have a link. You can learn more about it. Um, and this one does not use any base content from, from our stuff. So generally in the description, it'll tell you if it uses base content uh, from one of our bases. Okay. Like for example, uh, what's that pack called? Professional Outfits under Character Creator. Whoops. Uh, professional Outfits, where is it? Right, so my phone goes off here. Um, let's just search for it. Professional, I'm pretty sure it'll pop up for professional. I mean, our content store search is no Google, but there you go. All right, so it'll have uh, 31 bases. So you're more than welcome to purchase this pack and uh, make your own bases or make your own content from these bases. So you can color them, you can modify them and everything like that. But again, when you resell them, uh, just be aware that the customer will have to have to purchase this base as well, uh, this content pack for the bases. Um, I, mean, I mean, most people, a lot of, most users already have this content pack, Professional Outfits. It was one of our most popular back in the day. But uh, yeah, you just have to be cognizant of that. Um, okay, question from Joel. Uh, where would the scales be applied? Um, I assume you're talking about maybe uh, fish scales on your character. Um, that could be done. Probably the best way to do that would be using that normal procedure I showed you earlier. Um, I don't have the artistic skill <laughs> or wherewithal to create scales from scratch right now. But uh, you could do the same thing I did where I just kind of splotched that uh, white paint all over and created a normal map. You can probably uh, do the same thing with uh, you know creating triangle scales, and that's that's that would be my first approach, anyways. Um, and you could also, on top of that, 
uh, you could you could use, you could use like a tessellation map. So you could create a a, a dis, uh, dis uh, a map that allows you to uh, displace the uh, the uh, mesh a little bit. A displacement map, that's what it's called. <laughs> and uh, that would allow you to kind of uh, bring those scales out a bit more from the from the character's body. Uh, again, I would use that custom tool that I showed you earlier. Um, and uh, and Joel is asking about customizing the tattoo and adding a bullet hole. Um, yeah, for sure, you can definitely do that. Um, whoops, customizing the uh, tattoo. Again, I kind of showed you a little bit about that earlier. Am I still into uh, uh, um, so you have to activate the appearance editor? But again, there's so many parameters under when you when you select the tattoo. There's so many parameters you can use to adjust it. Um, I can even export the uh, the texture map, the the base color map of the tattoo, and maybe add like a Hello Kitty face on there if I wanted to, for example. I don't know why you'd want to do that on an orc character, but uh, yeah, it's something to uh, <laughs> something to consider if you want to uh, make him look kind of like a joker. Um, okay, good question from Pavel here while we're waiting. Can you animate this scar, for example, how it heals over time? Unfortunately, all the stuff in Skin Gen you can't uh, animate it. Uh, however, you can do this. You can add that into iClone. And you can animate it in iClone. So you can add animated textures in iClone. Um, for example, I'll just turn my character into iClone just for fun here. Uh, oh crap! <laughs> we have to leave Skin Gen right, right after we loaded it up here. Um, but yeah, you can animate the textures in iClone. But unfortunately, Character Creator, you can't animate them. But uh, um, in iClone, you'll have that shader section where you'll be able to uh, animate those parameters and you all, um, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not sure if I've ever tried to do that, like animate a, a scar growing or, or, you know, healing or something. Um, but that would be some, kind of an interesting challenge to, uh, but you can, you can definitely do it in iClone, just not character creator. And I'll show you how in just a moment here. Um, let's move on to the next question here from uh, Joel. Uh, looks like it still has those dividing lines that the default normal had. Um, dividing lines, I mean, for the, the head normal. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice there's those uh, dividing lines here. Uh, there's a way to fix that, and I forgot what it is. Oh, man, it's been quite a while since I did this. Um, put it on the head. Oh man, it's throwing me for a loop now. I know, I know. There's a way to fix it. It's, it's really easy. I think it might be in the regular materials. Oh, where was it? Oh no. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that, Joel, because I know there is a way to fix that, and it's in somewhere in here. Um, I don't want to um, just kind of bumble through right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good idea. Uh, Joel noticed that there's still those kind of uh, edges, um, areas along the, uh, in between the normals there that are kind of just blank. And that's something that we don't want. That's kind of an issue that needs to be resolved. Um, and I'll, 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 you can email me later and I'll, I'll show you how to do that uh, once I get it to have more time to go through it. Um, but what was I taking care of? Oh yeah, I'm uh, showing the character in icon here. Uh, you should have exported to icon. Oh, there we go. Yeah, um, good eye on that, uh, Joel. Uh, Cheryl, Cheryl asks here that uh, the, the ears are always brighter and lighter. How do you turn that down a bit? Um, for the ears, that's called subsurface scattering. So the ears are like like a thin layer of skin, really. It's like a membrane. So if you shine like a bright flashlight, um, you know, behind your ear, there's going to be some light going through your ear. Basically, it's just kind of diffusing through your uh, through the skin on your ear, uh, and that's called uh, the way we simulate that in in uh, CG is called subsurface scattering, or uh, triple S, and uh, uh, the way you adjust that is there's various lighting uh, effects that you can have 
I'll take off my auxiliary lighting here. So yeah, this uh, um, lighting on, on the character's ears there. Uh, that's the modifications can be done through the, uh, I think both through the character's material and through the, and through the light as well. Uh, let's go to, this thing's in the way here. Okay, this one's causing most of it. Yeah, there you go. So this backlight right here, um, if I go to modify, uh, you can deselect subsurface scattering transmission and that'll remove it completely. Uh, that's in the, in the lighting there. Okay, so you can increase or decrease the, the light uh, intensity. Um, in terms of uh, the, the material on the character, I'm, I'm sure there's a way you can do it on the character as well. I just forget. Uh, head. Should be under the shader section here. Yeah, subsurface scatter. So uh, here's the options for subsurface scattering. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, ear scatter scale. That should do something. Well, it's kind of showing a little bit there. Yeah. Um, I don't normally mess around too much with that, but uh, there's our radius, advanced. Uh, what did I go into here? Oh, I wasn't advanced there. I believe there should be something in here that uh, one of these values. Anyways, you can you can't take take it out altogether, but you can like really reduce the amount of uh, subsurface scattering in this section as well. This isn't a human head. So, you know, I quite like it myself, but, uh, you know, to each their own, <laughs> here's, our, <laughs> here's our orc with the um, bikini there. We'll just press the Jayhawk hue zoom in on his face. Uh, what was I gonna do here? Oh, anim animate uh, textures. So in iClone, anything you, you can see that has a, a green um, parameter can be animated. So you can see the strength here can be animated. Uh, uh, I don't have a particular scar image that I can really animate, but uh, um, what am I going to do here? Self illumination. Uh, under shader settings, there's some stuff you can animate. I'm pretty sure well, these ones aren't uh, animatable. Uh, the diffuse color is, the opacity, self illumination are. Um, I'm sure there's a few other ones that you can animate. Uh, it's not coming to my mind right now how I would do that. I would have to kind of experiment with a couple of different methods. Um, but if I, if I had a scar on the character's face and I wanted to reduce the amount of uh, heal it over time, oh man, that's a tricky one. Yeah, I'd have to get back to you on that as well. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, I forget who was asked the question actually. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I would I would have to get back to you on that. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just trying to think. If anything pops to mind here? We do have all of these maps to work with, and the shader settings. Yeah, it's just. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'd have to get back to you on that. Unfortunately, sorry about that. Uh, question from Pete. Um, do you have any tips on how you can offer to get water caustics happening in iClone? In the forums, I found some posts from four years ago about water caustics. Um, water is, um, natural water behavior is something that's a little tricky. Uh, that is currently under consideration as well for the next version of iClone, for iClone 8. Um, at, at, to what uh, level it's going to be implemented, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but generally for, for stuff like water, there's other tools that are much better than Icon for sure uh, at simulating water. Uh, Houdini is one that I like to uh, look into for, for water. Um, and, and any sort of like, you know, physics or simulations and stuff, are, they're fairly good with that as well. But uh, in terms of Icon, uh, I can't really say right now. Uh, okay, question from Cheryl. Is there an easy way to turn a CC3 character into a cartoon animator 4 character? <laughs> Um, unfortunately, in terms of Cartoon Animator 4 characters, there's nothing really easy about character creation. You kind of have to do them one by one, uh, limb by limb, eyeball by eyeball. Um, 
yeah, unfortunately, there's nothing that allows uh, us to, to transfer that. I did hear rumblings from the development team about uh, getting a plugin for that to happen, where you could kind of like have your character lined up uh, at a certain angle, and you could just um, automatically transfer that into a cartoon animator four character. Um, but I mean, the 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 appearance, the styles are are so different in general that it might be a bit tricky to do that. I mean, you could do it with like tune type characters, but in terms of this kind of orc character that we have on the screen right now, uh, you might want to you know reconsider that. <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm going to actually load up that uh, this project that I have finished because I'm going to see if my other project, I just thought of this, has the uh, same normal map issue. Somehow it might have just, because uh, I don't remember seeing that on my uh, on the version I did earlier. Uh, okay, Watson asks, where is that Photoshop normal map function? Uh, oh, so uh, back in Photoshop, um, go up to filter. 3D and generate normal map. Just make sure you have black on white, um, like a, a black background and whatever you want to you know, pop out, that has to be uh, white or various levels of, of monochromatic between black and white. All right. Let's see here. I'm back in here. That's not a little drop yet. Uh, okay, so question from Tim. When I import an accessory into Character Creator 3 to convert it to hair and click Create Hair, Browse, Beard, do I select Base Template since there isn't an option for full hair? Um, so, uh, is this loaded up yet? No, not yet. Um, when you create uh, the hair, yeah, you want to use the Base Template for now. Um, because, like you mentioned, uh, there's no option for full hair. And the base is going to apply in a more accurate position. Um, I can't really say, because I haven't really taken care of that. Uh, or I haven't really done a tutorial on that yet. I have done it in the past when I was like messing around. Um, but let's do create. Uh, oh, and I don't have any FBX um, stuff available right now. Um, but yeah, you want to definitely, I think select the, the, base, the base template. Uh, I can't really think of anything, any other reason why you would, why you wouldn't do that. Um, I have, I'd have to get back to you on that, Tim. Uh, maybe just email me as well, um, or someone in the forums might know uh, as well. It's kind of a tricky one. Um, question here from Lawrence: um, Are there ways to render video in iClone for VR, such as HTC Vive Pro Two? Um, currently, not quite but that is something that is under heavy development. I can say that for sure. Um, in, in many ways, VR is, is sort of the, uh, the technology of the future. And I think that uh, the VR development is almost just, just like just getting started basically. Uh, I mean, uh, and that's something that we really wanna get onto and that's in heavy development. I can guarantee you for uh, um, iClone 8. Um, but currently not right now because iPhone 7's, uh, man, when was iPhone 7 released? Uh, 2018, 2017? I don't even know. Maybe someone else knows here. Uh, any question from Stefan again? Can we export in GLTF 2.0? Um, not right now, but if that's a feature that you'd like, um, put put that in the wishful feature section of the forums because if, if, there's, if there's enough demand for it, then we'll certainly uh, start developing it. Um, but as for now, I mean, I haven't, uh, that's the first time I've even heard export of a GL, GLTF 2.0. So I think that uh, that may be something that's coming in the future, but uh, if it's something that you really require, definitely put it in the wishful features section of the, uh, of the forum there. Um, okay, so another question from anonymous attendees. Uh, this is a long one here. Let me just kind of read through it really quick first. Oh, this is for displacement. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, this, is a, this is a long question about displacement, uh, displacement maps and displacement multipliers. Um, yeah, there, there was an issue I remember from the development team a little while ago talking about that, uh, that white crack artifact uh, when it came to uh, iRay rendering. Um, but in terms, of, uh, in terms of rendering for iRay, I think you may be rendering for iRay. Um, that's probably not going to be, uh, uh, in, in, because we're not really um, continuing developing specifically for iRay. We're going to look at, or we're currently uh, developing for other uh, render engines. Um, just to get kind of uh, keep keep up to date on the times here. Um, but in terms of the uh, displacement, yeah, I haven't heard any any rumors about uh, that being improved uh, right now. So unfortunately, the issue you're having is is probably going to remain as is, um, and at least in terms of the IRE rendering. Um, so apologies for that, uh, anonymous attendee. Um, displacement maps in, in IRE uh, rendering can be a little bit tricky. Uh, so yeah. Um, next question here from Watson, Blender flip fluids. Oh yeah. I've kind of seen Blender flip fluids in action there on YouTube a few times. Um, it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. And, uh, um, good news for all you Blender users. Like I mentioned yesterday, we are really, um, strongly trying to develop our pipeline with Blender. So, um, that's something that will be much improved in the future. <laughs> okay. So Peter asks, uh, when is iClone 8 slated for? Um, iClone 8, the earliest would be um, end of this year, like uh, December, end of very end of Q4, likely um, beginning of next year. Um, very, very likely will not be the end of this year, although we may try to push it out, but um, I'm thinking that, uh, yeah, it's not gonna be uh, anytime soon here. But uh, next year is, uh, I can comfortably say next year. <laughs> uh, beginning of the year, probably. Uh, question here from Frank. For rendering an animation, do you have any suggestions where to get the currently, the current best compression codecs and how to install them so that iClone can use them when rendering to AVI? Um, oh man, what's that K Lite um, codec pack? That's, you know, really popular. You can probably just type K Lite codec, oops. Where's my hand here? Oh, there we go. This K Lite codec pack here. Just type in K Lite codec pack, and this this one generally has all the updated codecs that you need for um, for most video stuff, most rendering. And it's updated again. It's 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 uh, free and it's updated frequently, maybe once every couple of months or something. Um, yeah. So <laughs> Slater Slater mentions Octane is on its way. Yeah, indeed, Octane is one of the uh, render engines that we are working with uh, right now. So if you're an Octane uh, fan, then that's definitely something to look forward to with uh, Character Creator 3. All right, I think we are uh, out of uh, questions here. So that's awesome. We had about half an hour of questions. Perfect, every webinar should be like this. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think uh, that's about it for uh, for today's webinar. Um, for those of you who attended yesterday and today, thanks so much for, uh, for sticking with us and, and being with me here. And uh, we are going to have, uh, like I mentioned, uh, some Omniverse stuff coming up next month. So if you're looking into Omniverse, uh, that's something that uh, is going to be uh, fairly ubiquitous in the, in the, in the future of, of CG development, something to look forward to. Um, and we're going to be, we're with, uh, we're working closely with NVIDIA every step of the way to become more compatible with that. Um, that's going to be next month. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I'll, uh, I'll just uh, bid everyone adieu and uh, thanks for being here today. Um, there's always the forums if you have any future, uh, future questions or, uh, you know, you want to gossip about all of our new products, <laughs> forum.reillusion.com. And uh, yeah, I think we'll uh, end it off there. So uh, adios and uh, goodbye to everyone here. And I'll uh, hopefully see you in the next uh, webinar. Cheers, guys.